minute. It's a game I played. It was longer than expected. <laughs> The game Minute is a game by JW, Kitty, Duco and Dom. Those are developers I've never heard of before. It's published by Devolver Digital. I've, I've heard of them. They're great. They publish great stuff. Uh, it's £6.99. I purchased it with my own money. Somebody else linked it to me and was like, you should try this. I looked at a quick YouTube video and I was like, yes, I fucking should. I purchased it and I played it. The shtick of Minute is that you've got a little dude that looks like a duck and he dies every 60 seconds, no exceptions ever. When 60 seconds reaches, it dies. Respawns the last place he visited that had a bed, essentially. So like hotels, caravan, um, the, a, 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 a hut on the beach, you know. Places he goes to the bed, he respawns, you know. That's great. And uh, it's black and white. It's like not grayscale, but it's actually black and white. The background is black, objects are white, you know. Uh, it's It's very, very simplistic looking they say it looks like a game boy game i feel more spectrum a few people said to me like spectrum um could have done with a dash of color to get a bit more mass market appeal i don't know i liked it though anyway the game is wonderful it is bloody good i mean it is really really good because it has a world and you can see the whole map there's someone on youtube on youtube someone on um on, on steam made got the whole map of the screenshot um the map allows you to progress to different places in that one minute lifespan then you die you return to your bed and you start again you try and perform a different task it is about performing tasks in between deaths the game is essential i've got one minute to perform a task you perform a task you die you can even die early if you if you think you've not time to do anything you haven't got to wait it out you can just hit b on your controller i've played that controller and you just die there and then there's no punishment whatsoever for death it's just a natural part of playing the game you don't get any punishment at all other than you you have to walk to where you was again um, there are times when you have to find the perfect route because making a slight turn in a different direction will result in you saving a second, which might be enough for you to click that button, pull that lever, talk to that guy, you know? Every second counts in this game. When I started off the game, and again, I'm going to publish my uh, my stream of it, my VOD, um, the whole thing unedited is going up on YouTube tomorrow um, because I kind of feel like... I kind of feel like it's one of those games where like like seeing someone else play and their interpretation might be enjoyable. So I'm putting my VOD up so people can like get a vibe for the game, skip around, you know, decide if they want to buy it. And I, th I think you should. Um, some of the video footage I'm using on the screen now is from my vi from my VOD. I've covered up my face with a logo so you don't think I'm talking without lip sync, you know. Um, but yeah, it was it was so good. So very good. It struck me as being one of the best games I've played ever, not just this year. It still like, really is a great game. And uh, so much so I'm dedicating this whole Wednesday video to how great it is. The things that I liked first, outright loved. I love the art style, even though I don't think many people would. I think they would have been better off not doing this art style and doing something else instead. I strongly think that like, like it will put people off. I loved it. So maybe that means I'm the audience. I don't know. I love the art style. I love the main character, this little duck-looking fella with no backstory. or there's, there's nothing, you know, this little fella... He's just he's just a little duck dude. There's, there's no agenda. There's no story. You don't know who he is. He's just a duck dude. Um, that's cool. You know, it's cool that we've got this like weird ducky protagonist with 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 no plot whatsoever. Yeah, you know, he's like a little bit like Mario. You don't know who Mario is. Been the first Mario game. It's a plumber looking dude. He's playing. That's kind of how I feel about the little duck dude. Um, I like the way that you have to manage your time and, and when you start off feeling frantic and then you start seeing second as a long like you start seeing a second as a piece of time, a chunk of time you can do something with. Um, your interpretation of, like this game's like, the, like, like time is a commodity. The only thing you really care about is time. How long does something take? Can I open that shortcut so next time I can go faster, you know? Can I pull this block out of the way so next time I can just walk past? There's a lot of stuff in the game about the time mechanic. Uh, like, like there's a puzzle where you have to like, get to little teleporters. Quite a straightforward puzzle. Any other game you'd be like, oh, oh there I am, okay, you trial and error. But in this game, you have to work out a method for doing it. And you have to work that out because you've only got a minute to solve it. And then if whatever you get the other side, you have to have time to, to actually use it, to enjoy it, to indulge it. And because of that, you know, you, you have to sort of learn the puzzle rather than just guessing at the puzzle, which is which is great, you know, in my mind. Um, I like the charm of it. It's got a dog that's cute as hell. You give him a bone and, he, you know, he's, he runs around happy. It's cute. It's charming. It serves no real purpose, but it adds to the overall world. So even though it's black and white and it's simplistic, the characters are interesting. They're all unique-looking, funny-looking little buggers. Um, they, they're, just, they're just odd and enjoyable. The whole, the whole world is kind of 
there's just enough graphical fidelity to go, oh, I like cute, or oh, he looks nice, yeah, he looks like he looks grumpy, you know. There's enough graphical fidelity to give you a sense of place without convoluting it. Because I think if the graphics had been, in my opinion, if the graphics had been more complex, if they had been more on the graphics, it would have been less visually clear where you can and can't go, which might have caught you, I've caught on scenery, I've clipped on a rock, you know. Things that could slow you down would literally ruin your experience. The game's about three hours long. I felt like, the, I, said, I don't like to use the word gimmick, because the word gimmick sounds negative, but the shtick they have of this one minute lifespan um, in a three hour game, I don't remember like all these deaths, I remember like a one one complete playthrough. So they've done a good job of like like weaving together all the lives. A death is not a negative. It doesn't strike. It's not like darts like I'm fucking dead. I've got it again. You go, oh okay, I'll try something else this time. Three hours was a great length of time, and I think it didn't overstay its welcome. And I really think that in this particular game, it was the right length of time, and it wasn't too short either. I'm really glad to have paid six pound ninety nine of my money to play this game because it was such a great experience. Um, things I didn't like. Even though I like the art style, I can't help but think a little bit of shading, a little bit of colouring would give it more mass market appeal. So I'm aware of that, even though it's not a negative. It at times throws you a red herring. There are times when it does things and you go, fuck's sake, you know, like, like there's a puzzle. I thought it was a puzzle. I even at one point, you'll see it in my playthrough if you watch it. I, I, start, I was so annoyed by this puzzle. I started going on the um, the Steam uh, community page. You see if anyone else is complaining about it, if they've got a solution. Turns out it wasn't a puzzle. Um, it was it was a red herring, like like there was like it wasn't a puzzle. It was a shortcut you open from a different direction, and it made me go, oh for fuck's sake, because it looked like a puzzle. And then there's an endless desert where it goes. This is the endless desert. There's nothing here. And then there, there is at one point you literally need to go to the endless desert to find something, and it, it doesn't really give you any clue of that. You just have to run around. Eventually you stumble and you go, oh there it is. Fuck yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's annoying. I don't. I think the game was good enough that it didn't need red herrings or or, or convoluted directions or keep the guess it didn't need these things because the game was strong enough on its own that it didn't matter to me you know it was it was it was great how it was i didn't need more it was it, i didn't need to artificially lengthen the game it was fantastic and it just it just didn't need it and there's not a lot of it because again this is still one of the best games i've ever played this is one of the top gaming experiences ever for me um, I loved this game. Everything about them. After I finished playing it, I sit there thinking about it. it. Stayed in my head for like a day. I was like, "Oh my god, it's so great!" I kept thinking about going back to it and doing things. I was like, "No, I kind of want to leave that playthrough." You know, I want to just like leave that and just have that experience. I don't want to keep going back and kill it for myself. I'm gonna. I mean, there's a few things I want to go back for, but uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. It didn't need. Um, it didn't need red herrings and layers of complexity. It was the pureness of it. You know, was, was the thing I liked. So anyway, that's a minor negative on the game. I don't think. I don't think it'll, I don't, I'm not even sure most people would think of it like that, to be honest. But that's how I felt anyway. Um, the other thing I didn't like, the other, see, this is weird. The world itself is, look, the whole world is one world. It's all woven together. Like, if you look at a screenshot someone's got on the Steam forum, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. But if you did, you would see the whole world is woven together. A little bit like, you know, I've got Zelda, but I'm pointing at so you can't see. There's a map of Zelda on the wall. Um, there's, there's map, the Ocarina of Time that's one. the whole game is on that screenshot and you can do that with Minute the whole game can exist in one screenshot if you wanted it to um, but they don't provide you with a map now I get that like Zelda didn't have a map well it did but it was a bit shit you know um, I get that like like you're supposed to learn the world you're in but like a map would have been nice just, just the ability to like even if you had to waste a whole life to go look at the map to get like, a sense of where you are um, I think a map would have helped the game the lack of map didn't bother me but I think the game would have been elevated with a map. Now, of course, there's the argument that you know, then you would have you would have gone more direct to roots, and maybe it would have it would have shortened the game, or you know, but you would have made the game more enjoyable as well. Um, the map, I feel, would have been a nice addition. Even like I say, even if you had to jump through hoops to see the map, just being able to see it and go, oh, that's where I am. That's where that is. That's where, you know, get a sense of the world would have I felt would have been a good thing. I think it would have been nice to see that. Um, but yeah, it wasn't like horrible without it. It just would have been a nice extra. But that's a kind of negative mark. Um, other than that, I, I can't really say a, that's it. That's the, the, that's the negatives, you know. It's such a great gaming experience. And do remember when I'm saying this. I'm, this isn't just like a, a gimmick. I'm not just like, oh, I've just really enjoyed it. Best game ever. I'm literally saying this is one of the things. This is one of the games that I've played a lot of games in my life. And this is one of the ones where I'm like, this, this is one of the best. This is literally one of the best games I've ever played, ever. Not just this year. I mean, I know I banged on about Iron Maiden being a fantastic game, something really enjoyable. 
but you know, best game, best one of the best games this year, you know. But this minute here is one of the best games I've ever played. It's so well put together, it's so enjoyable, and it's so pu such a pure experience that I can't help but praise it forever, you know. This is gonna be one of them one of them games I'm gonna go to the hill to fight people about, you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my sword, I'm like, I'll fight you because this game's amazing. I don't know why I'm fighting people about a game. I, I'm making a whole scene in my head and it's hilarious. And I, I it's, no, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I almost wish I was. Uh, is he immortal? He dies and respawns. So is he immortal? Like, is it like a weird sense of immortality? It's like I'm I'm immortal because I always come back to life after I die. Is that like, you know, you know what I mean? Is that like is that weird time for me? Is that what the curse sword is? Maybe that's the curse. You know, immortality in one minute chunks. Can you live a full life in one minute chunks? I just fucking sleep just for ages. I'm like I'm using hundred lives to have a nap. Fuck you. Um, yeah. There's also one of the other things is to remember about this game is they could quite easily have gone the more you die, the more like like weird and mutated you get extra arms. They could have done something so the more you die took a toll on the world or on the character, and they chose not to. And by not by not punishing you for dying, it, you didn't go oh I fucking died again. You, you went to like oh yeah I'll try a different tactic I'll try something else. It didn't feel negative to die, and that was the key here. Uh, yeah, I love this game. It wasn't without being annoying. There was annoying things about it. There was things that pissed me off. I'm not going to say there wasn't. And as you watch my play through, there was times I was like pulling, I was like literally like, like tugging on my own beard with rage at one point. I was like, oh, I fucking don't know what to do, you know, tugging on my own beard with rage. Um, but yeah, all in all, the whole experience, the cohesive experience at the end, looking back, this was a massively worthwhile thing. It was so worthwhile. It was so, I don't know, there's something, it's just, and I'm probably explaining it so badly, but the way it made me think of that one minute, the way it chopped it up in my head, the way that one minute was treated to me as a cohesive like experience, was the thing that elevated this game. It took me three hours because like, it's it, not the whole world doesn't reset after one minute. Favors get remembered. It seems like favors get remembered where where like nothing else does. Like the world is static, but if you rescue someone, they they stay rescued. If you meet someone, they they remember you. You know, the world stays. I think positivity stays in the world. And maybe that's the message. Maybe that's what resonated with me. Positivity has a lasting effect on the world, but negativity vanishes. Maybe that's the way to look at it. It's a bit philosophical there, isn't it? I was about to say philosophical. Then I had to save myself. I was like, philosophical? Yeah, okay. But yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the thing I liked about it. Anyway, minute. It's fucking brilliant. It's just, just pay your six ninety nine. Go and play it because it's fucking brilliant. There's no, I can't, it's just, it's just, it's awesome. It's a bloody masterpiece. And it's the first actual masterpiece of a game i've played fresh in a long time i mean i've gone back and i've played like 16 bit and 8 bit games that are masterpieces and go, oh you can see why people like i see what's the test of time but i'm not I think this one isn't going to be remembered as fondly as zelda this isn't going to be an ocarina of time you know this isn't going to be remembered like mario this isn't going to be remembered like all those classics this isn't going to be remembered like dark souls will be because this is going to fly under the radar and it's really sad that so many people are going to pass by this game and it is this good and that makes me really sad because it's so hard for an indie game to be remembered as the masterpiece it is. Unless you're an Undertale, people ain't going to remember you in 10 years' time, you know? And it, people should. Maybe they should only remember this for a minute. Maybe that's the message here. Maybe it doesn't matter because because life is transient. We all live for a finite time. Then we're reborn for a fresh minute. I don't know. I've been HexDSL. This is Minute. Fucking brilliant game. I'd love to see your thoughts on it in the comments below. That'd be amazing. If you watch this video, feel free to press the like button and do come back tomorrow if you want to check out my playthrough. Even if you don't watch the whole thing, just skim through, have a look. If you're interested in supporting the bazaar, the channel as a whole, um, I do have a Patreon and it'd be great if you could support me on there, but never feel like you have to. You know, all my content will remain free. But if you if you, if you can, that'd be great. You know, I'd, I'd like that. I'd spend it on pizza and video games and comic books. Thanks for watching. I've been Hex. Bye-bye.